Today we're going to look at surveying and sampling. A survey can be conducted to obtain data from a small sample that may be representative of a larger group. The reason that we might want to do this is we might want to get some information about a group of people or a group of objects, a group of things, and, and finding a, a, a sample, a smaller amount, smaller group within that larger group is much easier and less time consuming to survey than trying to survey everyone in the group, especially when it comes to looking at large populations like a country's population. If we can generate a survey that will get the, the general idea from the majority of the population, um, and it's a good sample size, it's, it's not, it's not uh, inaccurate, we try and, and maintain its accuracy, then we can get a really, really good idea of what the rest of the population thinks or how they, how they act and things like that. So the accuracy of a survey uh, can, be, can be compromised, or not, not really the survey, but the conclusions of the survey. So what the survey shows, they can be influenced um, by factors including sample size. So just looking at sample size, if we have a very, very tiny sample, a very, very small sample within a large group, if the sample is 10 people in a group of many thousands, um, that's probably not going to be repre representative. The more people you have in a survey or the more, more data you collect, the more representative it's going to be of the whole. Uh, so a small sample size is generally more inaccurate. Um, but the, if, we, if we get a bigger sample size, it can sometimes be too time consuming and too difficult to do. Uh, also the bias, the bias of the sample. So the, a bias is where there is a skew, skewed leaning toward um, one particular agenda or one particular um, item that, that isn't representative of the whole sample. Uh, for example, uh, finding, getting data from, um, maybe we're looking at frog populations, if we're tr and, and the location that we actually get the data from is from a city um, and not the countryside, that's probably going to skew the data, it's probably going to make it more biased. Um, and the, the reason for that is because, you know, maybe, maybe not, not so many uh, frogs live in cities um, and maybe the, there would be a really under-representation of, of what it would be like in the whole country or in the whole area um, un, unless we take some data from those areas as well. So depending on where the sample is, is taken, who is sampled, what is sampled, um, there could be some bias involved. Um, and it's, if, if, that, if that is a factor, then it can, it can limit the accuracy of it, can let, let it limit the accuracy of the conclusions of the survey, or the conclusions of the, of the data that's collected. We can also get measurement errors. Uh, so in, in making the measurements, making sure that they're as accurate as possible, depending on what the measurements might be. It might be looking at, if we're looking at frogs, looking at frog sizes, making sure that we're measuring the frogs accurately, the frog sizes ac accurately, to get an idea of how big the frogs actually are. If we um, have a great amount of error in the, in the measurement of the frogs, um, we're not using the correct techniques, we're not using the correct methods, what we can get is these things called outliers. An outlier it sounds like it is it lies out and, and it does they're, they're data points that are really really far away and and out out there um, from the rest of the data that's collected so if we're making sure it's really really accurate data then they're going to be it's going to be a very very precise um, a precise um, sample that we're going to collect if we have some of these outliers, um, it that means the range and the interquartile range will be will be stretched way way out, um, and it can uh, mean that we can get you know a, a not a representative, um, an accurate uh, uh, conclusion to the survey. Now, in saying all of that, um, data that we can collect, it might be symmetrical or it might be skewed. Um, so this is the sort of sort of shape that you get from symmetrical data. There's some mean, and and the mean and the median are very similar. They're very very similar, um, very uh, very close to each other. So the mean and the median are pretty much around the middle here. In skewed data, the uh, mean is often often a little bit different to the to the median. And this isn't to say that this data is biased or or, or anything. It might be just how it is. Maybe more people do have um, 
less of whatever whatever it is that we're sampling, or maybe the the sizes are mostly around this area, and there are there are uh, only a few larger ones down here. So these this neither of these is incorrect or right or wrong. Um, this just might be um, dependent on the data that we're collecting. It might just be dependent on on the, the kinds of information that we're looking for. So this one's symmetrical. You can see it's nice and and even, and this one's skewed. It's pushed to one end. It could be pushed to the other side as well, um, and even it might not, uh, the one on the far left or the one on the far right might not be the biggest one, okay, but it might be just le less symmetrical and less even as this one. It might be just pushed to one side a bit like this one is here. So let's look at an example. So if we conduct a survey and ask 100 randomly selected adults how many children they might have, um, the results could, could look something like this in this histogram here. So the number of children's down the bottom, they're the items, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 is the maximum number of children that people said um, when they were surveyed, and 0 is the minimum number. Um, so we can see here that the frequency, it's, it's uh, the frequency of, the, of, of 0, um, so 50 out of people out of the 100, so half of the people said that they had no children. 20 people um, said that they had one child. Uh, 15 people said they had two children, 10 people said they had three children, and five people said they had four children. Okay, so we can see here very, very, um, very easily the patterns in the data. Let's have a look at some of the questions that we need to look at. So what proportion of the population would you expect to have two or more children? So that's two or more, so that's two, three, four. We're looking at that whole category there. Uh, B, in a group of 900 adults, how many would you expect to have four children? So just looking at the four children there. C, is the distribution symmetrical or skewed? And D, describe a method of conducting the survey that could lead to bias in the actual data. Okay, so let's look at the answers to that. So if, we've, if, if we're looking at the um, adults that have two or more children, there were 15 that had two children, 10 that had uh, three children, and five that had four. So that's 30 adults. 30 adults out of the 100 total said uh, they had two or more children. So 30 out of 100. So that proportion is 3 tenths or 30%. So 30% of the population said, uh, or, or you, you would expect 30% of the population to have um, two or more children. Now looking at B, looking at just those that have uh, four children, that was five people said they had four children out of the hundred, so that's one twentieth. So if we divide the top and the bottom here by five, that's one twentieth of the population have four children. So if we have a bigger population, <clears throat> uh, 9,000 people we're looking at now in a group of 9,000 adults, uh, we can find the number that would have that same same proportion. Um, if we assume that it's the same proportion in the 9,000, we can multiply uh, and find 1 20th of 9,000, so 1 20th times 9,000, and that's equal to 450 adults. So we'd expect 450 people, um, 450 adults in that, in that population of 9,000 people to have four children based on that other survey. However, uh, it, might not be, it might not be that amount. This is what we would expect, and it might be more, it might be less. Um, but the, when we take a small sample, uh, sometimes we can expand it out and it will be, the conclusions will be accurate, but maybe the conclusions of the survey were, were not accurate and maybe this is going to be vastly different. Um, and that's what we can do. We can actually look at, look at making, uh, look at larger sample sizes as well. So C, skewed. If you have a look back to the, to the graph, you can see that it's pushed very, very far over to the, uh, to the zero, um, zero children section. Half of the people said they had zero children and, and the, rest, the rest had, uh, had some children. So it was very, very skewed. It wasn't right, um, sort of symmetrical about the middle. D, I've got a couple of options here, but you might be able to think of something else as well. So maybe if the sermon was taken at a location such as a childcare centre or a nightclub, at a childcare centre you'd expect all of the adults visiting the childcare centre to have um, have children if they're visiting the childcare centre, you know, maybe even if they're walking past. So that prob that data probably wouldn't have been taken there because you would expect not many of the adults, if it was taken outside of a childcare centre, to say they had no no children. 
So uh, the childcare centre is probably not what, what happened here, but it could, could lead to bias. If you, if you took the survey outside of a childcare centre, you'd have a lot more people than maybe the normal population saying they had children. If likewise, in a nightclub, many more of the people would be younger and they're out, they don't have to, unless they've, um, they've, they've got a babysitter, they probably don't have kids at home. So in a nightclub, it's probably more likely that you would have more people saying they had no kids um, or more of the adults saying they had no children for this particular survey. And maybe as well, survey being conducted across a narrow age range. So most people would be having their having children late twenties into into their early forties. Um, so if this was the age range that was that, or even and older than that, because most people would have children, would continue to still have children that existed. Um, so older than older than twenty, uh, late twenties or or thirties would would probably mean you would get most people saying they had kids. Um, and if if the the adult survey definition of an adult legally I suppose is eighteen. So if you were surveying eighteen to twenty two year olds, you probably get very skewed data, very biased data, and it's not representative of the population because not the majority of the population um, in Australia or in in any population is not going to be eighteen to twenty. Too, unless perhaps you're looking at a population at university or something like that, then maybe the majority of the population would be 18 to 22 there. Uh, so there are many, many different things that can lead to survey bias, and that sort of thing. It's sort of a thing we need to be careful about when we're conducting surveys, making sure it's the, the uh, conclusions of our survey are going to be as accurate as possible.